Hollywood, Florida at the Hard Rock, Gennady Golovkin will make the record-breaking 21st defense of his world middleweight title against mandatory challenger Camille Zerometa from Poland. And just one day later, of course, Canelo Alvarez will fight Callum Smith at the Alamo Dome in Texas for the WBC, WBA and Ring Magazine Championship. And that's all off the back of a spectacular night in London last weekend where Anthony Joshua defended his unified world championships against Kubrat Pulev, of course, live on DAZN. This weekend is another massive weekend all around the world now for the global platform of DAZN. And we start here, we kick off the night with a very interesting fight between Walker and Olguin. And uh, this young man to my right, which we'll hear a little bit more of. I've been doing my research, you young man. You're, you're some talent. But firstly, um, Jalal, welcome. Um, big opportunity for you. This young man has boxed most of his uh, events in Mexico. Um, but an opportunity for you to come here and, and take him on on Saturday night. Yes, um, I'm ready to my best fight. Uh, I'm working for this. It's my moment. Well, you were going to use a translator. That was spectacular, by the way. Well done. Because I was wondering if you was, your English was good enough to tell us a little bit more about your, your T-shirt which is a little bit X-rated, but it's okay on the DAZN stream, I'm sure. But this is a big chance for you, big chance against a very strong undefeated fighter. Yes, uh, it's my opportunity, big chance. Uh, I'm ready. Yeah. Jalen, 18 years of age, obviously you turn pro at 16. 17, okay. I'll, I'll blame your manager for that, Ren. I gave me some false information. Um, undefeated 6-0. A lot of people talking about you, a lot of people talking about you behind the scenes. I won't embarrass you too much, but your name's popped up a lot. You're part of this new age of fighter that's turned pro in Mexico and had his fights over there. We saw it with Devin Haney early in his career as well and move on. Now, this is your American debut, remarkably. Yeah, it's a big thing. I feel that fighters now are, well, fighters like me from the U.S. We're turning pro in Mexico and we're taking charge of our destiny. We're taking charge of what we want to do. We're not doing it the way that people did it before before I came up. That's what we're doing. So it's a difference. I'm just ready to put on the show and show people what I'm about. Tell us a little bit about the background of Jalen Walker, not just the boxing background, but life for you growing up. Well, life for me, uh, I grew up in uh, South Central, South Central Los Angeles. Uh, I started boxing when I was seven years old. I had my first fight when I was eight. So I'm young, but you could say I'm a veteran. I've been fighting, well, 11 years. So I have a lot of experience. I have a lot to grow, but I have a lot of experience and I'm ready to put on the show. Do you feel that a lot of these young fighters coming through now are moving quicker? You know, you look at the likes of yeah. Devin, although he's had a lot of fights at such a young age, you know, he's already calling yeah. out Lomachenko and Tiafimo. Is that, is that the ambition of you to move quickly Hell through this yeah. game? It's uh, exciting times. Fighters now, we're all, we're all proud. We all want to be the best. We want to bring boxing back to its golden age, where the best fights the best. We're not scared. We ain't ducking. We're ready for everybody. So the plan on Friday night, make yeah. a statement, and yeah, the first of statement. many on, on the, yeah. in the U.S. on the zone. Yeah, to make a statement, to show all the hard work, all the hard work, all the sparring I've been having, because I've been sparring at wild card with guys older than me, like 30, 31, pros, champions, and I've been showing, been showing what I could do. So I'm going to show what I can do Friday. Just the last question about what boxing's done for your life. You know, in, in the UK, there's a big fo focus at the moment on how boxing can, can really change people's lives, yeah. how it can get them focused. Do you feel that was the case for you as well growing up? Well, I had my dad. My dad was always on me. My dad, he was a boxer, so I don't think I would have been in trouble, but boxing gave me everything that I have. Boxing is who I am. Boxing is my identity. Well, we look forward to it kicking off on Friday night. Gentlemen, if we can pose for a head-to-head -head up here, please. Thank you. Um, my eyes on the prize. I'm going to get this job done. That's the main goal. No distractions, there's nothing that around here. It's just straight gym, so that's what we just come here and we work. We got a, we got a household full of you know talent in, in this family, so it's been going pretty good. Yeah.
Yeah, go, go, go. Feeling bad, feeling bad, you don't know. Take it in the back, hit it in the chest, throw a battery right in the back of his head. I was too dice in the jump. I need a couple of M's. I ain't have that many friends. I would do anything just fit in. Look at me, taking chances. I might have to slow it down. I ain't see Yahweh over coma. I won't say it. All these blessings in the rear. I might need another round. No, I had to feed my dogs like we broke up at the pound. Thank you. And we go from one big prospect to another big prospect. Reshat Matty against Akoth on Friday night. Great fight. I saw uh, you look very excited earlier. I saw you outside. Tough game. Big opportunity for you. This young man has been doing big things so far, but you've, you've seen it before. You've, you've tested yourself against this kind of opposition. Ready to go on Friday night. Yeah, first of all, I want to thank God for this. And second, I want to thank Matchroom Boxing for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I think uh, this, is, uh, this is our job, and blessing come once. So I think uh, he's a good boxer, and he's ready, and I'm ready too. So uh, I think going to be a good fight. One thing we know about you is that you're very tough, very durable. Many fighters haven't been able to stand up to the power of Reshat Matter. Are you going to do that on Friday night? Are you going to give us a great fight, great war, and also you're going to show a lot of durability in there and, and test this young man out? Yeah, you know, like uh, okay, like it's uh, yeah. When when you're ready, and uh, this is this is our job. So the thing is, is to show what exactly what I have, and my dream was to be ex exactly to be a world championship. So and I think to be in the big platform like this, I need to show what I have, what God gives me. Russia, I think uh, we all know you're in for possibly the toughest test of your career on Friday night. It's what you want. It's time now to step up through the levels. Yeah, every time I come into fight, um, I'm looking to put on a good show. You know, much respect. Thank you for taking the fight. Um, and the main thing is for me to put on a good show. You know, I want to thank, you know, of course, you and Matching Boxing and The Zone. Um, but yeah, main thing is to steal the show. And I want to put it on for everybody watching, all my Albanian fans and uh, all my people from New York. We know that COVID's affected different states in different ways, and, and it's one thing that's obviously affected every fighter. How's it affected you in New York? It's been difficult to, to obviously bring the sparring in and train in the same way, but you've stayed in, in great shape and, and very focused for Friday. Yeah, it was, um, New York is probably going back to another lockdown again, so uh, we're just trying to work with whatever we can do. Um, thank God it's been going good. I've been training every day. I'm ready for this fight, and uh, we'll see what happens Friday. Obviously, um, it's been a couple of years now since your professional debut, since the launch of The Zone. You are one of those fighters that you know, have had virtually every fight on the live stream as well. Are you excited now as you start to go through the levels? I'm so excited because it's almost like your graduation is, is nearly over. You know, if you get through Friday night, you're going to be moving into you know, eight and ten rounds and, and even championship fights in 2021. Do you think that's when we're going to see the best of you? You looked untouchable so far in your professional career, but... How exciting is it to know that we've got a nice test on Friday. If you come through that, it's almost time just to light the torch paper. Yeah, I'm, I fear nobody. So I'm ready to do, I'm ready to fight anybody in any, anywhere, anytime. And, um, you know, Friday is just, uh, you know, much respect to him, but he's in my way. And I'm just looking to expand my legacy and, uh, and just bring light into the Albanian people and just show them that, listen, I'm here to stay and I'm here to, you know, get my throne. Obviously, just one word for your Albanian fans, of which we know there are many. Just teamed up as well with Florian Marku in the, in the UK. He was unlucky on uh, Saturday night to get a draw. But moving forward, you guys have got mad support over there. And the passion is phenomenal. I mean, if all of a sudden you're inactive for a couple of weeks, I'm getting harassed by Albanian fans on Instagram and Twitter. But it's great to have that support, right? Passionate people that, that love to watch you fight. Yeah, i got to say that they're, besides the... Uh, Everybody in the UK, I, I'd probably say that they're, they're probably the best boxing supporters in the world. You know, they support our, uh, each athlete, everything we do. And, um, you know, come Friday, this fight's for them. Good stuff. Big step up for Reshat Matty on Friday against Okuth. Gentlemen, if we can have a head to head up here, please.
we are joined by a fellow Brit on the stage, um, highly ranked in every governing body, John Ryder taking on Mike Guy on Friday night. Very important fight for both guys. Mike, I'm going to go to you first. John Ryder's sitting pretty in all the governing bodies, had a very close fight with Callum Smith that he believes that he won. He's about to possibly fight for the WBA regular title as well. Big opportunity for you to cause an upset on home soil. Yes, it is. Um, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, the underdog and underlooked, but I'm going to bring a little bit more to the table than, you know, most have seen in the past. We've seen that your defeats have come at the higher level. I get the impression as well you're always ready to fight. Some of those may have come at short notice in your career as well. You ready for this fight? Obviously, difficult environment with a pandemic in terms of training, but you come into this fight expecting to win, trying to win, and in great shape as well. Yeah, I'm in good shape. Um, you know, I'm in a little bit better position than other people. I have my own gym, you know, so I can kind of get in and out, you know, whenever I want. So, it, you know, as far as, like, not being able to train and anything like that, that hasn't really been a problem for me. John Ryder, like I said, had a good fight with Callum Smith last time out. He fights Canelo on Saturday night. You watch much of John Ryder? Do you, do you leave that to the coach? Or when you took this fight, you've had a, had a watch and, and you believe you can win this fight? Um, I, I leave it more up to my coaches. I watched a little bit. Um, I, know, I know he's a tough guy, you know, but I'm also a tough guy. And, you know, I bring a whole lot to the table. And um, So he'll see on Friday. John, um, big opportunity for you to get out, but also a risky one. You know, sometimes you, you look at fighters who are ready to fight for a world title. They take a fight. Sometimes you don't see them as motivated as they should be. They expect to win. We've seen it, especially in the pandemic as well. Very, very important fight for you on Friday. Yeah, no, massively. I mean, with, with the carrot being dangled, I'm seeing this as a, a final eliminator. So I'm not taking Mike Guy lightly whatsoever. This is the most important fight in my career moving forward. Obviously, uh, it's been over a year now since your last fight. That seems to be... The, the, the natural trend now for, for fighters who headline events where they're having to wait almost 12 months to fight again. Expect to be, have no ring rust. I know you put in the hard rounds of sparring with, with Tony, but you think we're going to see a, a strong performance from John Ryder on Friday? Yeah, I feel we've left no stone unturned in the gym. It's, um, it's been a great camp, been a long camp, but we've, um, we've done what we had to do and we've, we've done all the work right. We know that uh, obviously Canelo fights Callum Smith on Saturday night. Canelo Alvarez, the regular world champion at, with the WBA, Callum Smith, the super champion, that belt will become vacant and you are expected to fight for it early next year. But is it just a case of sole, sole focus on Mike Guy on Friday? Yeah, I mean, there, there's obviously sour grapes. I feel like uh, I think the, the world knows that I beat Callum Smith last year. Um, I'm not going to dwell on it, but listen, Friday night is the most important fight in my career moving forward and I won't leave no stone unturned in the process. I have to ask you, because you, obviously you've shared a ring with him. I know you feel you won that fight against Callum Smith. Do you give him a chance on Saturday night to cause an upset? I know he goes into the fight as champion, but saw a huge size difference in the head-to-head -head between Canelo and Callum Smith. You expect a, a good fight there, but a tough one for Callum Smith. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always going to back the Brit. I'm, I'm patriotic. Um, the height difference is not any really different to what I thought Callum, so I don't think that would be a problem. Hopefully Callum's worked on that and, and he'll use it, use it to his advantage and probably drop his height and box a bit more, but I can only see a Canelo win. Well, we should see on Saturday, but firstly on Friday night, very important fight in the career of John Ryder against Mike Guy. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head up here, please. Be great. You have to do great things. You have to constantly rise to the challenge placed in front of you. Good for Canelo Alvarez, coming back in what is arguably the toughest fight he can possibly get in. No matter how big or small, but to cement your legacy, you must do it again against the very best. And again. Gout Smith 
is not going to be just a walk in the park type of fight. And again. Leave no doubt about your greatness. Well, three world championship fights on this card from the Hard Rock in Hollywood on Friday, live on DAZN, and delighted to, to welcome a women's world championship fight, Choi against Silgado for the WBA Super Featherweight Championship of the World. I have to say that pandemic or no pandemic, women's boxing has been such a brilliant experience to become involved with, to help develop and help grow around the world. Of course, we know Katie Taylor strolled into my office a couple of years ago and convinced me to take a run at women's boxing. It was probably one of the best things that I've ever done. We've seen so many great fights this year, so many new world champions crowned. And on Friday night, we have a chance for another great world champion to defend her title um, against Silgado. Callista, welcome, welcome. Uh, a chance for you to become world champion on Friday night and uh, an amazing opportunity for you. Bienvenida, te está diciendo Gongora. Dice que estás acá en los Estados Unidos para pelear por una pelea de título y que sí es una gran oportunidad para ti. Bueno, yo creo que siempre he tenido grandes oportunidades y bueno, una más, gracias a Dios. She thanks God that she has other, been, other times, other opportunity, but that she thanks God that she has another one. One question I have about women's boxing is that one of the most entertaining parts right now seems to be the all action of every round. We know that it's two minute rounds. Are you a, a fan or a believer of the two minute rounds? You prefer three? From an entertainment perspective, it looks like constant all action over two minutes. Eh, te pregunta, en esta ocasión vas a tener bastantes rounds para pelear. Eh, ¿Estás acostumbrado a las peleas a corto o te, te entusiasma la idea de pelear por tantos rounds? Bueno, eh, me gusta llegar a, al máximo. Creo que eh, cada vez me alimento más en, en, en cada guerra que tengo y, y es una nueva experiencia y, y me gusta cómo se me defina la pelea. A mí no me importa solamente subir ahí y hacer mi trabajo. She wants to do her job. She likes the fights on the distance. Uh, she got, likes to go round to round. Uh, she wants to finish either short or long way, but she likes she likes more the long distance. Thank you, Calista. Whom enjoy. Welcome, and so great to see you join the Matchroom team and the Zone team as well. Um, big opportunity for you, big platform as well, and chance to make a statement in the division. Sorry, what? <laughs> Was it the wrong country? We brought the wrong translator in. Are we? <laughs> the question was, big opportunity to make a statement on Friday night. Even mm. <laughs> 좋고 제가 어릴 때부터 예, 미국에 와서 시합을 하고 싶었고 또 챔피언 타이틀 방어전을 지금 일곱 번 방어전을 하면서 이제 더 나아가서 빅, 음, 더 멋진 시합들을 전 세계 세계 챔피언 최현미가 있다라는 걸 보여주고 싶었는데 그 기회가 지금 와서 너무 좋습니다. Um, having uh, been my first fight in the U.S., this I feel is a great opportunity for me. Uh, I've defended my title eight times, and to be able to defend it in the U.S. and create a bigger platform for me is also a great opportunity. I'm looking forward to this fight. Women's boxing um, is on fire right now. Tell us about how boxing found you, and tell us a little bit about your upbringing into boxing. 지금 현실에 여자 boxing 점점 커가고 있고요. Boxing Boxing, 어, 
점점 이제 여자 복싱이 더 인기 인기가 올라가고 있고 또 저도 일단 한국에서만 시합을 했었었는데 일단 세계 시장이 어떤지 이번 기회를 통해서 알고 싶습니다. 하고 복싱 어떻게 저 처음 시작을 했는지 한국에서 이런 거 어떻게 시작했어요? 어, 어 복싱을 처음 시작한 거는 로스코리아 퍼스트 복싱 스타트 로스코리아에서 시작을 했고요. 일단은 제가 한국으로 넘어와서 14살 때 일단 한국 다시 시작하게 된 계기는 그냥 성공하고 싶었습니다. <웃음> so I began boxing in North Korea at the age of 14 and then as when yeah, and then when I came down to South Korea um, I thought about it I and what got me back into boxing was because I wanted to become successful um, through women's boxing becoming a bigger sport it has also given me this opportunity and finally we know you have Silgado on Friday but what a division uh, Hamadouche, Michaela Meyer, yeah. and we know we already have our plans for a Terry Harper unification. So, very important fight on Friday. <웃음> 음, 일단 제 체급의 네 명의 챔피언들이 다 일단 프라이드가 강하다라는 건다 여러분들 다 아실 거지만 네 지금 이번 구멸날 시합 네 당연히 중요 팔차 방어전 중요하지만 제가 앞으로 나아가서는 아 세계 네 개의 타이틀을 통합하는 게 일단 목표고요 일단 그그첫 번째로는 예, 테리 하퍼가 첫 번째가 되었으면 좋겠습니다. There is a lot of um, strong competitors in the Super Feather Cup weight division. Um, I am focused on Friday being my eighth title defense. And my ultimate goal is to unify in, in the weight class. And my next, after, uh, once we get through Friday, I do want to look forward to Terry, Terry Harper. Thank you very much. Well, as we know, DAZN now a global platform for boxing. And so many international fighters here, South Korea, Colombia, England before, Poland, Kazakhstan, Albania. It's non-stop. You can watch this show all around the world on the DAZN app. And if we can have a head-to-head -head here, please, for this World Championship fight. He was that annoyed that he wasn't fronting the press conference today. We have Todd, Todd Grisham back with us today. Todd, sorry, mate. I had to come back sooner or later. I, I, I've been shaking throughout this press conference because you've been watching me with I eagle have. eyes. Well, I tell you this, the, uh, this is actually being rated live and the female viewership had been plummeting, so they sent me on stage hopefully to get some, some females. You've got some front. Yeah. You have, you've got some front. Let, uh, me, let me ask you this question, though. In a span of seven days, you have promoted AJ Pulev in England, Triple G, and Zeramati here in Florida. Tomorrow, or Saturday rather, you've got Canelo versus Callum Smith in Texas, all during a pandemic. You came and go buy a beer at a local pub. What's this week, where does it rank on your career accomplishments being able to pull this seven day feast off? I think when you're so immersed in something, you, you don't 
really take a time to say, wow, and all those things are happening within seven days. I mean, this first started back in March. You know, I remember doing the Mikey Garcia, Jesse Vargas fight here. You know, we came into a new year having had AJ against Ruiz in Saudi Arabia. You know, DAZN also had Canelo against Kovalev. We even did Jake Paul against KSI, sorry, Logan Paul against KSI back in November as well. And we were flying and, and like many businesses, like uh, many subscription channels or platforms, it's been a very difficult time having a lack of live sport. I think the way that the zone of bounce back has been remarkable, not just with the US content, but their international content as well. And, and we were at a stage last year where the back end of the zone's yearly schedule was unrivaled. And we have to say it is again. You know, when you talk about boxing content and platforms in the US, there is no platform that is even close. And by the way, Fox, Showtime, ESPN, they've all done amazing jobs. But when you look at the running and the international running of the close of the DAZN schedule, it's quite spectacular. And the plans in 2021 are really, really exciting. So I think the plan for us has just been to keep getting things over the line day by day, event by event. So last week it was just, just get AJ in the ring, just get the victory and move on. Now it's, okay, everyone's tested here, everyone's passed, you know, yeah. triple G, let's get him back for that record championship defense. Then let's get to San Antonio, let's do Canelo against Callum Smith, amazing, there'll be 11,000 fans in there to watch that. And then we can just have a breather, couple of beers, and then start planning for 2021. After you get that breather and a couple beers, everyone wants to talk about the possibility of Joshua versus Tyson Fury. But there's obviously uh, Alexander Usyk who could stand in the way if that title, the WBO, I believe, uh, has to be vacated if he doesn't defend first against Usyk. His manager said that they'd be willing to listen to a step-aside offer. If you were his manager, what would the monetary figure be that would satisfy you to say, all right, you two go at it, we'll wait for the winner? Um you know, I obviously work very closely with Alexander Usyk and Igis Klimas is, you know, I class him as a friend. They're in a strong position where they know they're the mandatory challenger. But at the same time, we have a fight on our hands and sorry to the governing bodies that eclipses all belts. And we just got to be a little bit careful because you may be on the verge of going, do you know what? Let's just get rid of politics right now. Let's just drop all the belts. Because if we lose one belt... We might as well lose them all. And then you have to pay sanctioning fees. Exactly. And step aside. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. it gets to a stage where you've got the biggest fight in world boxing. You're paying each governing body hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now you've got another guy who probably wants seven figures to step aside. So we just got to be careful because ultimately the aim of this fight has always been to be for the undisputed championship. When Anthony Joshua came into my office many years ago, that was always the dream. And we will do whatever we can to make sure that every belt in boxing is on the line in a Tyson Fury fight. What we won't be, and we, what we won't do, is we won't be held to ransom, and we won't let politics get involved in a, in a fight that boxing needs, right? We've been, uh, you know, we've done YouTube events, right? You saw the other day Mike Tyson against Roy Jones do a fantastic number on pay-per-view. 1.8 million. Exactly, supposedly. <laughs> if, 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 we, if we don't start making these kind of fights, then that kind of thing will become the norm. I don't mind it, sprinkled in, but we have to remember what is great about our sport, and that is the best versus the best. 2021 needs to bring us Joshua against Fury. 2021 needs to bring us Chocolatito against Estrada. 2021 needs to bring us Errol Spence against Terence Crawford. And we don't mind saying fighters on our platform, The Zone, who are with other platforms because we want the best fights and we have to continuously try and raise the bar otherwise people will get bored with the sport and find an alternative so belts or no belts you will see fury against joshua but we hope that everyone is sensible everyone uses common sense and that great fight can be for the undisputed championship of the world you talked about some of those uh tent pole events being sprinkled in some of those uh, unorthodox type of fights. Triple G, who's never said a bad word about anybody in his life, was asked what he thought about fighting Oscar De La Hoya, who said, hey, I think I can come back and beat Triple G. And he said something along the lines of, if I was allowed to kill someone, I might actually do it to him. What are your thoughts well, on that? I'm glad you said that because I saw that quote this morning and I thought, did he say that? And I, I don't mind the, the comment because it comes from a gentleman. Uh, in, in, in Triple G. I mean, for me, that's a very dangerous position for Oscar De La Hoya to be in. You know, any guy that comes back after a long period of inactivity and, quite frankly, in, enjoying himself, 
for a long period of time. You don't want to be getting in the ring with Gennady Golovkin. So who knows in boxing? I, I would think that Gennady, Gennady is a very focused individual. You know, we did the Zoom call earlier this week. The one thing he didn't want to talk about was Canelo Alvarez. The only thing he's focused on is Zerometa. But you can't ignore the fact that these two legends of the sport are fighting within 24 hours of each other. Okay, so Gennady fights on Friday, Canelo fights on Saturday. It doesn't take a genius to know that the DAZN executives are saying two wins means Cinco de Mayo, the third great fight. But Callum Smith has other ideas. I mean, you know, he's our guy. I've, I've promoted him since his professional debut. I look at the head-to-head -head yesterday and I think, how do we lose this fight? <laughs> but we also know that Canelo Alvarez is pound for pound number one. He's a spectacular fighter. And, and getting to know him and work with him I see this fearlessness that they're willing to fight anyone. You know, let's just take a minute to appreciate the resume where he boxed the world middleweight champion, you know, in May of 2019. He boxed the world light heavyweight champion in November. And now he's boxing the world super middleweight championship. All of those guys regarded as potentially the, the other number one in their division. They don't care about taking risks. They believe they're that good. So we'll see what happens in San Antonio. Certainly here, all eyes focused on the record-breaking defence, the 21st defence of his world titles against Zerometa, who, you know, is here with a great team of people. You know, they're looking at the performances maybe against Derevanchenko or Rolls and saying, is Gennady Golovkin the same fighter? Potentially bad news for them. I think the answer is yes. I think Jonathan Banks and all their strength team doing great work here in, in Miami, and I think you're going to see a brutal fight on Friday. Just a couple more questions as we await our uh, co-main event to enter the press. That's conference. a great fight as well, by the way. Absolutely. What, what are your thoughts on your, your co-main event? Well, uh, I think, you know, Akhmed, Akhmed, Akhmedov against Gengora is a great, great fight. And I think it's the perfect time for Ali to step up now. You know, he's fighting a 19-0 dangerous puncher who's extremely tough. This is for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the world. amateur success, too. Exactly. And I think this is the kind of fights we need, you know, on the undercard. And this is... What, what I said to Reshat Matti earlier, it's so exciting when you get a fighter that's ready. We're going to find out. Ali Akhmedov may be a future unified 168-pound world champion. Gennady Golovkin, the team, speak so highly of him. But on Friday, we find out, are you actually the next big thing? Because Gongora will test him every step of the way. You've talked about how much you appreciate what the UFC is able to do by consolidating their fighters and forcing fights to happen. If you were in charge of all of boxing, how many weight classes would you be or would you have and how many belts or would you have? I think the dream of every boxing fan and every promoter, you know, when you look at the UFC model, I get very jealous because you have the ability to make the best be the best consecutively without little argument. I don't think we'll ever get to that stage in boxing. But belts can provide a problem, but they can also provide an opportunity. You know, I think everyone would say, if we had one belt, we would just know who the best was. But that system only works if there's one umbrella letting everybody fight the best. Forcing the fight. Exactly. You know, and you look at the, the classic example, of course, is the welterweight division at the moment with Crawford against Spence. I mean, they're both wasting each other's time. No one wants to see them fight anybody else except each other. So find a way to get it done. Sometimes fights aren't quite big enough to quash the egos and the politics, and that might be one of them. But when you talk about weight classes, divisions, and belts, you know, I think the ultimate goal is for one belt in one division, but only if you have the ability for the best to fight the best consistently. If not, having four championships or five, if you include the IBO, does allow other fighters to get opportunities to win world championships. So... It's difficult. I just think that every sport is under pressure right now to deliver value for fans, and more importantly, in a business sense, to broadcasters. And if we don't pull our finger out and start making these great fights, boxing will die, or broadcasters will pay out, and then me and you will be out of a job, Todd. You know, I don't know who first, but I don't want to be out of a job. I love this sport. Well, you, you could know. fire me, so I assume you'd fire me before No, you're yourself. right. Yeah, but I'm not going to. We're going to go down together. But we're not going to go down because we're going to make these great fights. The schedule in 2021 is looking so, so strong for DAZN internationally. Of course, with this global product now, it was fascinating to see the numbers flow in from the AJ fight in different territories. And there's so many unearthed territories out there that have so, many poten so much potential for boxing. And this model, this platform, this global service will give us the opportunity 
Now, who knew there were so many hundreds of thousands of people in Bulgaria ready to subscribe to the zone? Well, last week they did. And, you know, it's, it's very exciting. Who is the best promoter and boxer besides yourself? <sighs> well, I mean, I think from a promotional point of view, I have to give a huge amount of credit to Bob Aaron. You know, Bob Aaron, you know, Don King, ethically, <laughs> may not be everyone's cup of tea. But what Don did very well was, when there was a Don King fight, you knew he was in town, mm -hmm. right? And I think to be a promoter, you do have to be a showman. Bob Aram has, has consistently passed the test of time. Don King is still going. In fact, I was arguing with him two weeks ago, trying to get one of his heavyweights on the card. But Bob Aram has been at the top for a long, long time. You know, I think Top Rank are a great company. I think Bob Aram is a great promoter. But he's 89. You know, it's, you said yeah. some really nasty things about him over the no, years. No, but only, only in, in, uh, in reply. <laughs> okay, you know, yeah, but I, right. I, do, I respect Bob Aram. I don't think he really knows you know, a great deal about the audience that is currently tuned in to, to boxing, to MMA, certainly to the, to the YouTube world. But he is a very smart man. He's a boxing man through and through. And, you know, I think he, has, he runs a great business. I'm getting the rap side. So uh, one final question. You're very popular in, in the UK. Who is it easier? Well, there's a lot of people who disagree with you. Well, okay, popular. I didn't say loved. I <laughs> yeah, said, true, true. Yeah. Maybe infamous is a better yeah. word. Who would it be easier for you to get a sit-down chat with, the Queen of England or Al Heyman? Well, that's a good question. I think you see more of the Queen of England. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Al's got this great sort of mysteriousness, you know. But it's quite clever because if you ever get a call from Al Heyman... Have you met him in person? Yes, I have. Yeah, a number of times. So he's real? He's real. Well, unless it wasn't Al Heyman. We don't, we don't no, know. I mean, you could have just pretended switch. it was. You know, exactly. <laughs> but what always makes me laugh about some Al Heyman fighters is they go into the change room after and I've promoted some fighters who are managed by Al. Another very smart man. And someone comes in and says... Is actually, the one I'm thinking of is James DeGale. So I think it was Sam Watson or someone coming in and says, is Al on the phone? And the fighter goes, wow, Al, Al's on the phone. Yeah. And he picks it up and he goes into the toilet. And he's like, you know, he comes out, he says, that was Al. He said, I box really well. I'm like, I mean, possibly it wasn't even Al. And if it was, maybe he wasn't even watching. But he's created that persona yeah. where, you know, for the fighter, it means a lot. And that's very clever. All right, well, thanks for the chat. I know you got to move on. Uh, congratulations on setting all this up, and good luck this week. Thank you. To be great, you have to do great things. to constantly rise to the challenge placed in front of you. Good for Canelo Alvarez, coming back in what is arguably the toughest fight he can possibly get in. No matter how big or small, but to cement your legacy, you must do it again. He's coming back against the very best. And again. Gout Smith is not going to be just a walk in the park type of fight. And again. Leave no doubt about your greatness. Well, welcome back. We've found Carlos Gongora, who had a brief stroll around uh, the, the wonderful Hard Rock Hotel here in Hollywood, Florida. This fight is a brilliant, brilliant fight. Akhmadov against Gongora for the IBO World Super Middleweight Championship. I love this fight, 50-50 fight. Such a huge opportunity for both guys to go and make a major statement in the division. Carlos, we'll start with you. 19-0, big opportunity for you and a big moment for you on Friday night. Eh, Gongora, vamos a empezar contigo. Eh, tienes una gran oportunidad este viernes, 19 y 0. ¿Qué piensas de la pelea? Bueno, sí, primeramente agradecido al público y por la entrevista. Eh, pienso que esta es una buena oportunidad eh, para seguir aumentando mi carrera, ya que voy a pelear con un gran boxeador y, bueno, me siento muy contento de estar aquí ahora. He wants to thank everybody uh, for the opportunity to be here and for this conference. He thinks um, it's a very, very uh, big opportunity to be here and he hopes so he go good tonight. You have a great amateur career as well. You're very highly regarded. 
but this is it, isn't it? This is the moment where you take the big challenge in your professional career. Eh, tienes un buen background de peleas como amateur, una muy buena eh, carrera, eh, pero en este momento lo entiendes. ¿Tú entiendes que esta es, este es y este es tu momento en el boxeo? Sí, tengo muy buena trayectoria en el boxeo. Inicié a los 12 años y prácticamente, bueno, he esperado muchos años este momento, tanto cuando estaba en el tema amateur, en los Juegos Olímpicos, estuve en los Juegos Olímpicos, ahora es mi momento del tema profesional y bueno, me siento contento de estar aquí en este momento, justamente en este momento, que es donde voy a pelear este título. And as you said, yeah, I do have a big career as amateur. I started 12 years, uh, but looking, as you say, I do understand this is the moment, this is my moment, and it's going to be. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. Ali, welcome. Um, this is a big fight for you on Friday, and how excited are you to finally face the big, big test in your professional career? Али, здравствуйте, добро пожаловать. В пятницу будет очень серьезный бой. Насколько вы готовы, насколько вы рады тому, что есть возможность в пятницу себя проявить? Ну, я очень рад находиться здесь. Я очень рад, что у нас состоится мой первый бой в звании чемпиона мира. И я готов, я готов на все сто процентов. У меня был отличный тренировочный лагерь. Я покажу лучшую версию себя в этом бою. I'm really excited to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, championship uh, fight on Friday. I had an excellent training cap, and I will demonstrate uh, what I'm capable of on Friday. It's always been very difficult to match you, um, and there are many fighters that didn't want to, to face you. Now you have by far the toughest test of your career, expecting a, a ch tough challenge from Carlos Gongora. Очень сложно было находить для вас всегда противников, потому что с вами далеко не все хотели бы встретиться. Сейчас довольно-таки серьезный у вас соперник. Ожидаете, что он окажет сопротивление в пятницу? Безусловно, да. На этот бой я настраиваюсь так же, как и на все свои бои. Я ожидаю максимум от боя. Карлос очень хороший боец, и я готов. Я готовился к этому бою. Undoubtedly so. I'm very focused on this fight, and uh, Carlos uh, is a great fighter, and uh, I especially got trained for this fight, and uh, you will see me on Friday. Well, you will. Thank you, gentlemen. Fantastic fight. Ali Akhmedev against Carlos Gongora for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Do not miss this fight live on the zone on Friday night. Gentlemen, if we can have a head to head here, please. Sorry for the delay. I had to change my Triple G apparel to this current fight kit. I was wearing the same fight kit from the Derevchenko fight. Apologies, the hair's a bit all over the place. Uh, here we go. This is the main event, the record-breaking 21st defense of Gennady Golovkin's world middleweight title against Camille Zerometa, the IBF mandatory challenger here from the Hollywood Hard Rock Hotel, live around the world on the zone. Firstly, Camille, welcome. Welcome. Big opportunity for you here, the big stage to fight a legend in Gennady Golovkin. This is it, your chance to win the World Middleweight Championship. Duża szansa dla ciebie, Kamil. To jest wielka możliwość dla ciebie przeciwko stoczyć walkę przeciwko takiej wielkiej legendzie jak Golovkin. 
Jak się czujesz? Czuję się bardzo dobrze. Na wstępie chciałbym bardzo podziękować telewizji The Zone, Ediemu Hernowi, ekipie Gołowkina i swojemu promotorowi, że walka w końcu doszła do skutku po, po takich perypetiach. I feel great. First of all, I would like to say thank to Mr. Eddie Hearn, to The Zone Platform, to Golovkin team and my promoter Andrew Wasilewski for this great opportunity and that this fight will happen. You are unquestionably in the prime of your career right now. There are some people that believe Gennady Golovkin may be in the back stages of his career. This has come at a good time for you. And do you believe that Gennady Golovkin will be at his best against you on Friday night? Ty w tej chwili jesteś w swojej, w swoim najlepszym momencie kariery, w swojej najlepszej formie. Wielu uważa, że Gennady jest już w gorszym, w gorszej dyspozycji. Co ty o tym uważasz? Na jakiego gołówki na ty jesteś przygotowany? Nie obchodzi mnie, co myślą inni, na, y, w jakiej formie jest gołówki. My nastawialiśmy się z moją ekipą, z trenerem na najlepszą wersję gołówki na i to chcemy wnieść do ringu. Uh, I don't care about uh, what people say. Uh, I'm prepared for the best version of Golovkin and me and my trainer, we were preparing for the best Golovkin. We know you have a great team. You would have had a great camp as well. How big would this win be for you and for Polish boxing? Seems like Polish boxing at the moment is, is rising up. There'll be a lot of people watching on DAZN in Poland. A big opportunity for you. It would be a huge win for yourself and Polish boxing. A jesteś po doskonałym obozie. Jak wielka to będzie wygrana? Co to będzie znaczyło dla Polski, jeżeli wygrasz? Moja wygrana to będzie na pewno jeden z największych triumfów nie tylko w boksie, ale i w całym sporcie. I chcę tego dokonać w piątkową noc. My victory it will be not only one of the biggest victory in Polish boxing, but in Polish sport generally at all. I'm going to show you everything on Friday. And my last question. A lot of people believe Gennady is a big favorite in this fight, but you've earned this right. You're the mandatory challenger, and on Friday you believe you will shock the world. Oczywiście Gennady jest wielkim faworytem, natomiast czy ty wierzysz, że zaszokujesz w piątek cały świat? Po to ciężko trenowałem, wierzę w siebie i w piątek chcę to pokazać. Nie chcę teraz dużo mówić, wolę to wszystko w ringu pokazać. I've been training very hard. I don't want to talk a lot. I just wanted to show you everything on Friday. Thank you, thank you. Gennady, welcome. Thank you so much. You look great. He sounds very confident. It seems that every time someone faces you, they raise their game. You know that he would have trained harder than ever before for this opportunity, and this is a real challenge for you on Friday night. Can I speak Russian? Just I want to show you my international version. For me, of course, it's a big chance оставить большой след в истории, в истории бокса. Я очень благодарен всем тем, кто организовал этот вечер. То есть это и Дозон, и Мэшрум, и, конечно, Тим Шереметы. То есть без, без него у нас бы ничего не получилось. Я думаю, нас ждет прекрасный вечер, прекрасный бой. Um, thank you very much. I do think it's a great opportunity and uh, it will be an interesting fight. I'd like to use this opportunity to thank Matchroom, The Zone and Sharameta team. Without his team, this fight will not take place and uh, we are all looking forward to a great night of boxing. I know that you always try and push the boundaries, try and make history. How proud will you be at making history on Friday night and how important is this record-breaking 21st defense to you? Я, конечно, очень горжусь тем, то, что я подошел именно на, я вышел на этот уровень, то, что у меня будет возможность подраться и побить рекорд, который продержался уже долгое время. Для каждого спортсмена, я надеюсь, это большое достижение побить вообще, установить новый рекорд. Так что я действительно на в шаге от своей от своей мечты, можно так сказать, от своего желания. Um... Very proud uh, to uh, reach this opportunity. It is a great uh, step uh, to me, and uh, this record defense uh, will play a very important role. And uh, I'm just one step away from uh, setting this uh, new record. Uh, this uh, current record has been standing for so many years, and uh, it's just exciting.
obviously now you've had a couple of fights with Jonathan Banks. I hear you've had a great camp finishing this off in Miami, Florida as well, particularly working on your strength. How are you and Jonathan gelling now? You think you finally got it right? We're going to see the best of you on Friday. Да, сейчас мы действительно уже, наверное, понимаем друг друга на сто процентов. Мы провели отличный сбор в горах, правильно завершили, завершили весь сбор здесь внизу, то есть во Флориде. Хотел бы поблагодарить, наверное, этот штат Флорида, который предоставил такую возможность здесь провести окончательную часть нашего сбора. Я думаю, мы будем лучше в эту пятницу и покажем свою лучшую версию, потому что уже долгое время мы не выходили на бокс, уже пора возвращаться. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, we reached that level when we uh, virtually uh, finished each other's sentences. Uh, we had our camp in the mountains and we finished it here in Florida. And I would like to thank the state of Florida for this opportunity. You'll see the best version of Golovkin on Friday. And finally, some people feel that, are you still the, the prime, ruthless Gennady Golovkin. I know you believe you are, we believe you are, but does that motivate you to prove to people that you are still the best middleweight in the world? And as always, we expect a big drama show on Friday Night Live on Design. Конечно, конечно, я отношусь к этому очень серьезно. Я понимаю ту ситуацию, в которой я нахожусь. Я постараюсь обязательно показать лучшую версию себя и Как я всегда говорил, большое драматическое шоу, оно будет присутствовать, я думаю, в пятницу. Потому что у нас было довольно много времени подготовиться отлично. И я думаю, это будет действительно лучшее в этом году. Certainly. And I do take this seriously. I trained uh, for this uh, specifically. And uh, I do believe that it will be a big drama show. I had a lot of time uh, to get ready for that. So you we'll see the best Gennady Golovkin on Friday. Thank you, Gennady. Thank you, Camille. Thank you. Two great fighters, the IBF, the IBO World Middleweight Championship on the line, the record-breaking 21st defense of the legend of Gennady Golovkin against the young, hungry challenger, Camille Zerometa from Poland. Whatever you do, do not miss this fight. Live on zone from the Hard Rock Casino here in Hollywood, Florida. We expect, as always, a big drama show from Gennady Golovkin. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head here, please.